Defending PBR World Champion JB Mooney is back and looking to make up some ground. He is running out of time, but he's proven before. Never count him out. Previously on the PBR. Absolute carnage for the Cowboy. Babington just gets tossed around like a rag doll. Kaiiki Pacheco is this his year to win it all. Looks like Triplett's on his way back. Alves does his job. We are about to find out what Jess Lockwood is made of. It is not. For the 16th year, the scenic surroundings of Idaho set the stage and provide the contrast for the confrontation we are all about to witness. The Idaho Center is the playground today, and we will see who keeps the kids in order. It is time to wrap up our weekend in Idaho, the 24th regular season event of 2016, and we are winding it all down. Vegas, only a few weeks away, and as we show you our current world standings, Kaiki Pacheco has played while the others have been away. Cooper Davis, 830 points back. J.B. Mooney, as we mentioned, a couple weeks off due to injury. He has 1,200 points to make up if he wants to defend his world championship. J.B. standing by with Rhea Garcia. Craig, in typical JB fashion, he covered his bull coming back and tested the health of the rib. How is it? And uh, more importantly, why didn't you go see the doctor? No, I knew what was wrong with me. Uh, I've had broken ribs plenty of times throughout my career and uh, really can't do anything for them. So went home, took a couple weeks, feel good now. We've got less than a month before the world finals, plus 3,300 points on the line once you get there. Are you counting on having the kind of finale that you've had in the past? I'm counting on riding every bull I get on from here on out. That's all, that's all I can try to do. And that will take care of itself. Shorty, how's things looking out in the arena? Well, yeah, great now that J.B. Mooney's back. And I'll tell you why, J.B. Mooney changes the, the dynamic of the field. And the reason is because he's a home run hitter and he connects a lot. He's going to force the rest of the pack to do things that they normally wouldn't do because they know that J.B. Mooney going into the World Finals is a serious, serious threat. You've got to take your rewrites. You've got to keep your foot on the grass. You've got to do your job because J.B. Mooney's here. Excited to have him back. JB, one of those 15 qualified rides we saw in round number one, none better than his brother-in-law, Shane Proctor, who was your winner 24 hours ago. And I love that comment, JW Hart, that ah, JB knew what was wrong with him. Why go see the doctor? Dr. Mooney to surgery. Dr. Mooney to surgery, please. Well, I don't know if he really, I mean, he knows, you know, you got to know your own body. and He knows he's been around long enough. Uh, Might have been good to go get it checked out. <laughs> Just maybe, case, maybe know? just I mean, in case. <laughs> but, you know, there was times that I probably could have went and, and Ty and Justin, we've all kind of skipped out on the doctor because you know how you feel. Look, I'll, I'll be good to go next week or I'll be good to go in a couple of weeks. Uh, when you've got the age that JB's gotten on him now and, and experience, I'm going to go with it. Well, and you, you brought it up, experience. Listen to your body. No, none of these riders know themselves better than themselves. Ryan Dirtier, we've shown you already, has had a great season and if you've been along for the ride he was our first three-time event winner this season Phoenix Little Rock and Springfield J-Dub he was one of the guys that turned down a re-ride in round number one well we'll get into that a little bit later too <laughs> it, it just stuns me that that a guy that's got the most event wins for the season is outside the race of a world title he's got to get the consistency Trigger Happy was more than happy to leave the shoots, and that's going to leave Dirty Dirt less than happy. With that 77, he's going to need a lot of help if he hopes to get back on one. Well, and that's just the point we was making, Craig, that if you take your re-ride last night and you get up there in that 85 mark or maybe 86, the re-ride pins are always good. Uh, you don't have to hit a home run tonight to stay in there. You don't have to make that whistle. It always suits you better. But if for some reason this right here happens, you get a kind of a bad shot but not re-ride worthy, you still got a shot at that championship round. Well, now it don't look like One it. of the other themes, sorry to interrupt you there, partner, for a second, but one of the other themes I know you want to talk about a lot today is the fact of season management and the toll that it does, though, take on these guys. Was it a smart decision, though, or is it a smart decision for these guys sometimes to decline that re-ride option? 
Well, I think that Kaiki may be the only one that if, if he has it, if you're going to go that side of it, he's got the argument of it because he's in the lead. He just has to keep pace with those guys to beat them. Now, JB and Cooper and those and JR and, uh, and those guys start taking their rerides and, and placing in them go-arounds, it's going to force Kaiki to start taking those rerides. Lachlan Richardson hasn't won an event this season, but he is having his best season to date. Remember, when we first saw him in Connecticut back in 2012, he promptly won his first event on the Built for Tough Series. He's had two thirds this season. He got bucked off of pound the alarm in round number one. Here he faces High Razor. Oh, this is a neat little bull. Going to bounce right here in the gate to ride and just really get it on, make a lot of rounds. Should fit Lachlan to a tee. Kind of a smaller bull. High Razor able to slice and dice the Australian. It'll be another 0 for 2 weekend, his third in a row actually after Richardson had that great result in Charlotte. I sure thought this was going to be a better matchup than this. I thought Lachlan would fit this boy. You say he kind of bounces right there, gets a little action there to him, spins it up, just doesn't have a hold with his spurs and gets him to the outside and uh, gets kind of close to getting stepped on there. It's a rough way down. Richardson will now get to watch the rest of the weekend, visiting with his good friend Gage Gay there. And we move on quickly to Robson Palermo, the three-time world finals champion. No question he'll be in Vegas again. He'd like to go there with some added momentum. He was one of the 15 qualified rides in round one. Here he faces Ringworm. Yeah, this bull comes from Kevin Loudman. He should be right here in the right. And uh, talking to Kevin a little bit earlier, he should be just a really good bull. Ty Pazabon rode this bull in Fredericksburg, Texas at a turn pro division was 85, maybe 85 and a half on him. And uh, so, uh, you know, if Palermo can stick it on him, I'm going to say he's in that 84 to 85 range. Uh, the points here tend to, to back down just a little bit. The judges are a little tighter here. Well, it would be his first weekend since Anaheim back in the end of January, early February. If he does make a qualified ride here, then he would have a multiple ride weekend that weekend in Anaheim, he was second. He went three for four, including a championship round ride aboard Dreamcatcher. How hard do you pull for this guy with the consistency he's had over the years? Keep moving! Keep moving! Keep hustling! Keep moving! Keep moving! Keep moving! Robson Palermo perfectly placed. And he is our first two for two rider here in Idaho in a resurgent weekend for the 32 year old. A cowboy who, J Dub, as you well know, seriously contemplated retirement a year ago. Watch this first hit right there. He's late. Makes a brilliant move, gets around. Now he's a little bit inside. Watch him how he just keeps reaching over that bull's front end, keeps coming out of there. Bull wants him down inside a little bit, believe it or not but he makes a good recovery. And that's just experience paying off right there. In our 10th month of 2016, it had been an eight month drought since he had had more than one ride on a weekend. Give Palermo credit, he moves a full bull ahead of the competition. This is Mason Lowe who's got a chance to ride his second one. Traveler looked like he needed a whole nother set of gears against Mason Lowe. Mason Lowe only needs 84 and a half to move ahead of Palermo. Mason Lowe has now ridden six of his last eight. Yeah, you know, he just a few weeks ago, he started going to the gym, and you watch when he gets off this bull, he's not even breathing hard. So good things looking up for Mason. Bull turns back in his hand. Doesn't have a lot of gas to him. This bull just got good timing. Just a practice bull for this level of bull rider pulls his tail, gets off away from his hand, might be a little bit dangerous. Shorty, do y'all guys, is it kind of scary when them guys start looking to the outside, wanting to get off the outside away from their hand? Well, that deal got a little bit close only because, J.W., about the time we got that bull to jump out of it when Mason got off. But uh, with these Brazilian ropes, and I'm not sure what Mason was riding with, but uh, with the Brazilian ropes, it's a little easier to get off away from the hand. Uh, the guys have kind of figured it out, so we're getting used to it. This is Nevada Newman getting set to go up against Pops. I spoke with him earlier, and he was excited about this matchup, J Dub, even though this bull has bucked him off twice before. Hey, hey, hey. 
He struggled to stay up and with it. And a day after getting knocked unconscious, he's able to sort of stay with that ride as long as possible, but he will come up short. 7.3. Bull turns back right there. Just, just what the playbook called for. He's going to start left, make him a couple of rounds, going to shoot forward. When he goes back the other way, he just gets his chin up, and that's all because he just was riding a little bit too far to the inside when that bull went back the other way. He was a little bit late that movement. When it did, it got him reared back and got that head jerked up, and he couldn't couldn't look down. Let's take you back to round number one. It got very scary after he made the eight seconds and got the qualified ride. Big Sky did not cooperate. You see, he's a little bit to the inside of this bull, and when he goes back the other way, same thing. He just hangs just long enough. Just hits his head against the ground, knocks him out, and then the bull rolls over the top of him. And you know, Craig, the, the best part about that, of the bull rolling over him, is it, in my opinion, it, it, he was unconscious and he was limp. And when that bull rolled over him, he didn't try to force nothing, just kind of fold him up. And he's in good enough shape, young enough guy, that he's flexible enough that it didn't hurt him. We know we will see Robson Palermo in the championship round. He's with Leah. The first man to cover a bull this afternoon. Robson, you kept hearing Shorty say, keep moving, keep moving. What does that do? You know, he helped me a lot. And uh, I hear everything because he's so close to me. And uh, when he said, keep it moving, I tried to move. And today, he did he did good. Bull went to the right, and I got outside a little bit. And I hear him, and I just got in, and uh, he's worked good. Props for Shorty, Craig. That's right. Shorty Gorham, multitasker extraordinaire. Props to Robson Palermo as well. The Bad Boy Moore lead dog in the round and one of two men perfect in Idaho. PBR Built Ford Tough Series on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Ford. Visit PBR.com slash Ford for your chance to win a 2016 Ford F-150. By Cooper Tire. Visit coopertire.com or a Cooper Tire dealer today. And by Heinz Barbecue Sauce, made with the masters. A lot of headlines to bring you. None bigger than J.B. Mooney, the defending PBR world champion, returning from two weeks off. The young guns, they are getting it done with three of them in the top five. And don't forget, there's a bull race as well for a world championship. We'll talk about the bulls on the bubble a bit later on. And just a reminder, if you're going to join us in Vegas, you've only got a few more regular season events to wait and watch. Welcome back upstairs to the PBR's Built for Tough Skybox. Look who's here, the Iron Man, J.W. Hart. Good to have you, my friend. I am Craig Hummer. J.W., you've spent the past couple weeks on the proverbial sidelines, but I know you have been watching the show, and in those couple weeks, just recently at least, Jess Lockwood has come very close to winning. He hasn't been able to convert, but what have you seen from the 19-year-old? Well, the meteoric rise he was on coming up the standings, he hadn't been, but half, you know, half the event some of the other guys have been to. But last night was a little bit of a hiccup in his game. He showed the immaturity and the rookie rookie mistakes. He turned down a rewrite. After talking to him, you know, visiting with him, I, I told him, I said, you're number five in the world. You're 1,700 points behind. You can't expect J.B. Mooney and, and uh, those guys up top, mm -hmm. Cooper Davis and Kaiki Pacheco, to falter. If you're betting on them to falter, you just well take all your money to Vegas and put it on the roulette table. <laughs> Well, we've seen minor faulting, if you want to call it that, from Lockwood, but you can bet he has learned from experience. Another guy who's learned from experience, Leo, over the past couple years, Ty Pazabon. It's good to have him back this weekend. We are welcoming back one of the top Canadian bull riders, Ty Pazabon, who in 2014 at the Canadian Finals suffered a severe concussion. He was out for four months, tried to come back to a bull riding, said his head still felt fuzzy. So he went back home and started training some more. And then by the time he finally did make it back to a bull riding, he uh, had a bull step on his chest punctured his lungs he said since then though I've only had a bad shoulder so everything's been going great and he has been one of the hottest guys on the PBR tour over the summer well what's incredible you know now with the the status if you want to call it J-Dub in terms of the other leagues that a guy can go to there are a lot of points on offer this is what Pazabon did though in round number one it garnered some good points and experience that's the thing PBR is getting so big that in the tours 
in Canada, the, the Blue Death uh, Velocity Tour here in the States, and then you have the one in Australia and Brazil. You can go anywhere in one of these countries and make up ground on these world championship races or get to the built for tough level. Ty Pazabon, four wins, three times second up in Canada. That's helped him move all the way to 31st in the world standings. Heartbreak kid turns out to be a heartbreaking ride. Pazabon ever so close to going two for two, but he'll have to hope that his 83 and a half is good enough to bring him back. This is a good bull, turns back right in the gate. You know they've been having this bull on the right hand delivery, and he's usually better on the right hand. I don't know why they've moved him to the left. He has a little more up and down. If you want to call it a little more treachery on that right hand side, it kind of gets in that, in that category of a rank bull. Tonight he was just really good. Ty Pazabon missed one. Pazabon at the moment in that 83 and a half, good enough to still sit in the top 10. This is Fabiano Vieira. His injuries have been well documented, as have his successes. A two-time winner this season with everything he's got going on with his shoulders, Jada. He's actually one of the guys that's been able to win here over the years. He won back in 2013. This guy simply amazed me just with his durability through this injury. This is a good bull. Bull's getting a little bit of age to him, but this should be a good one for him. Another surprising buck off Americana. They had met before Sacramento earlier this year, and they combined for 85 and a half points. Here it doesn't even last three seconds. Well, and he missed the playbook because he knew this bull was going to look to the left. Right here, you see him look right there, and then he goes to the right. Just falls for the old timer's fake. Then he gives up ship and steps off. You can't do that. If you want to be in that world title race, you can't be stepping off bulls. You've got to be. That next, if he'd have held another jump, maybe that bull would have come back under him and picked him up. You just can't step off like that. Well, there are a few different segments of our bull riding contingent. The ones, as you mentioned, that are in a fight for a gold buckle. Other ones who are simply trying to make it to Las Vegas. We only take the top 35 in the world, and Chase Outlaw has to defend that position. He has 547 points. He got some points in round number one, tied for fifth aboard Smoke Wagon. This is Dirty Deeds. Well, and this is a guy that got hurt early in the year, tore his shoulder up, went and had surgery, come back, tore the other one up. He has to come back again. He goes on the turn pro and the, the velocity tour through the summer and just went on a tear, Craig. I mean, he went like six first. I mean, he just flat went on a tear. And he comes in here, he's looking at making the finals right in the face. I mean, he, he was simply out of the running for the whole year, but he's done so good at the turn pro levels that he's got a good shot at it, and he's got a really good bull right here. Should be right in the gate to right. Has a little bit of backup right around the corner, so if he doesn't pull him down right around there, if he can sit down and get around that corner, this should be good watching. Lee, and Chase is one of those guys, isn't he, that even though he seems excitable, he approaches this sport very simply, doesn't he? You said that perfectly. I talked to him about that because the age-old question for sports people is how do you come back after an injury and not let it get to you emotionally, physically, and have it mess with your head? So I talked to Chase about that, and he said, this is just what we do for a living. Getting injured is part of the process, but I don't think about it. I just want to come out here and ride bulls. He told me a few weeks Weeks ago when he came back, guys, and I mentioned it during a broadcast, that to get to that point that he just mentioned, Jade of the Leah, was a bit of a struggle. He used to get a little worked up about it. He used to feel like he was losing ground whenever he was back home healing. But however he did it, he came to he made his own peace with it, and now he, he feels it makes him a better writer. Well, he's done a good job of whatever he's done to change change his ways. Is, is done him good. He made a great ride last night. He's got a good bull tonight. He's got a good chance of coming back in that championship round up there in the pack to get a good draft. He's got his friend Matt Triplett right there trying to keep him should he get into any sort of injury area there. The bull jerks him forward. This bull, Dirty Deeds, we haven't seen much on the Built for Tough series only one time, but in his career, he's allowed a couple big rides down at the Touring Pro and Blue Def level, including a 90-point ride to Wallace Oliveira. 
Dirty, what are you seeing from Dirty Deeds down there? Obviously, he's providing a little bit of an issue for Outlaw. Yeah, this bull, you know, he's just not really wanting to be still. He'll either be squatted up against the back of that shoe, not really feeling good. When he does step forward, he wants to lay down. Uh, Chase got off him. They're going to roll him forward, try to free this bull up a little bit, try to get him standing again. Chase knows what he needs to do. He just needs to get his hand in the road, get a decent shot, and get out of there. Uh, he's trying to do this bull, just really simply not giving him very much of an opportunity. Jay Dub, since you've worn both hats, give me something you can do as a rider and then something you can do as a contractor to make a bull like this a little bit more cooperative. Well, on the stock contractor's end, uh, you might take, or you see they just put the rope around his neck and they'll saw it back and forth, just kind of give him something to focus on and get his mind off what Chase is doing so Chase can sneak up there and get out. On Chase's uh, side of it is just to hurry up a little bit, kind of be a little quicker, maybe keep a little bit of, instead of setting your full weight on that bull while you're doing your rope and taking care of business, you might keep your, your you know, britches off of him just a little bit, and then when you slide up there, go ahead and get out of there. Making note of Chad Berger, who yet again has the most bulls in a weekend. Last week it was close to half the bulls, almost 50 in attendance. Here we just showed you he's got 30 bulls here in Idaho. Chase Outlaw again in that 34th position, even with all the time he's missed trying to make it to the World Finals. Great job by Outlaw to at least on two separate occasions that I saw J-Dub fight to stay in that ride, and he's going to be rewarded. He's now the third man, a perfect two for two. Well, the first one's just right around the first corner. He gets a little bit leaned back and kind of tightened up, but he loosens up well. Watch him right here as he comes around. Bull's going to take a jump. Setting good, leaning up over the front end where he wants, but he just kind of gets a hold of his outside foot right about here. And see how he kind of picks him up, and he breaks right there, he's outside. Now he loosens up with his outside foot, and that moves him back to the inside. And about right here, he gets tapped off, and everything's going good. Right at the end, he slips off the inside right here just a touch, but it's close enough at the end. All he's got to do is hang on. He's got the whistle made. He moves to the lead in the event, and he's with Leah. Tell me a little bit about those two adjustments you made. Uh, heck, he had me really beat to the outside, and I just didn't clamp up, just let loose, moved back to the inside, and about went too far and just had to hold. Worked out perfect. Craig. This is Wallace de Oliveira. Yeah. Finally brought over the front end, and what a wild ride that became aboard Jump Street in what has become a season of not just inconsistency, J-Dub, but a season that Wallace might want to be over soon <laughs> continues. Another 0 for 2 weekend. Bull starts out real strong. And it's kind of the motto on this bull. Sometimes he starts good and kind of takes off, but he finally jump kicks out and finds him a spot, and he comes around. Then he gets tangled up a little bit right there. And as he wants to go back the other way, he just jumps and kicks over his head and jerks Wallace down over his head. Nine out of his last 10 events, no qualified rides, 18 consecutive events without multiple rides on the weekend. Eduardo Aparecido, who's been in a bit of a slump as well, and the sixth ranked bull rider in the world. Well, in round number one, it was not fun. And it didn't start out beginning well, and it didn't end good. See him right here just get kicked right in the britches and uh, puts a big old bruise in his tail there. And, uh, that's sore because that's what you got to sit on in these bulls. Well, not just that, but you look shorty at his arm. You're not supposed to use either of your arms as an anchor when a bull is doing that. <laughs> no, it's not a good idea. You know, and that, this fence is a dangerous place. It doesn't give very much. And, and when you get out between there and the bull, things can go real bad uh, in a hurry. But uh, a pair of seat is a guy, you know, he's been struggling here a little bit lately, but we saw with Shane Proctor last night. All you can do is keep riding through it. You just got to get on every time and focus on the basics and try to do your job the best you can. It only takes one bull to turn it around a lot of times. Unfortunately for a pair of Sidu, set him up, Joe, set him up perfectly. That ride ends just under six seconds. And two years ago, J-Dub, 
right here, a Parasitu won his first ever Built Ford Tough Series event. Not going to happen in 2016. Well, and, and he just fell for the oldest trick in the book. When they go back the other way, that's what these smart bulls do. And this is in this bull's playbook. It was no secret talking to Chad Berger before. It. That's what this bull does. He's going to make him a couple rounds right there to the right, go back the other way. And the only way to keep from doing it is to ride him a little bit to the outside so you kind of fool him in to keep going. Chase Outlaw, second in the round. However, he leads the overall event here in Idaho. Outlaw ahead of Lowe and Palermo. They're your top three. Still to come, number one in the world, Kaiki Pacheco. Kaiki Pacheco proves a point yet again. Pacheco, man, he is just perfect on the back of it. He thinks yes. Kaiki Pacheco leaves his stamp on the Pacific Northwest. He wins the 1515 bucking battle. As the PBR rides on from Boise, Idaho. In the dust, catch my footprints, summer heat, love that nuisance, got my bell, rope around my shoulder. PBR World Finals moving to the brand new state-of-the-art T-Mobile Arena located on the Las Vegas Strip. We'll all be there November 2nd through the 6th. Music acts scheduled to perform include Steven Tyler, Jared Neiman, Warren, and many more. For more information, visit PBRFinalsWeek.com and reserve your tickets now at AXS. Com. We've got three qualified rides in round number two. None better than Robson Palermo. Those same three men are a perfect two for two. And now it's our world number one's turn to try to match them. Kaiki Pacheco. Well, what a streak he has been on. Another three-time winner along with Ryan Dirty. Tell you what, this guy is hot. And I don't know that, that they can knock him off the perch if they all ride really good throughout the rest of the season. There's only three events, two events left after this one. You know, eight go rounds is basically what we have left. I think this guy's in charge and he knows what he's got. He's got his goal in his, in his vision and he's going to be hard, hard to knock off that perch. Well, and to your point, partner, I open this up to the whole team. Shorty, Leah, feel free to weigh in. What I am interested to see now that J.B. Mooney has come back, we saw J.B. ride in round number one, Kaiki ride here. If these two guys start to match each other ride for ride, I think in years past, the Mooney mystique counted for something. I think guys like Pacheco, the Cooper Davises, perhaps even the Jess Lockwoods of the world would get a little intimidated. I do not see that happening with Kaiki this year. Well, I don't believe Kaiki is going to be bothered either way, but uh, don't forget about Cooper Davis. He's right in the middle of that hunt, and I don't think he's going to get uh, bothered either. I want to talk a little bit about this bull, Craig. This is a young bull from DNH Cattle Company, Wonder Flyer. He's a three-year-old. This bull is really young, but he's really outstanding. I was talking with Dylan Page before it started. He's a little bit nervous about the number one guy in the world getting on his pride and joy here, but uh, you got to expose him at some point. He's brought him here, and he's got the number one bull rider in the world on his back. Well, Pacheco needs this ride. He declined his rewrite opportunity, kept 70 and three quarters points. Give Wonder Flyer a lot of credit right there. And as you mentioned, perhaps a sigh of relief a little bit on the contractor side of the equation, but Pacheco unable to convert here. You can see in the background Dylan Page's face. He, he was trying not to smile, but he's smiling <laughs> near to ear inside, I promise, because this is a good little bull. Just gets Pacheco leaned back a little bit. 
And that's due to with, with the reason this, he got leaned back was the bull's moving forward a little bit and he didn't chase that front end hard enough. That gets you leaned back, gets you moved to the outside, gets that arm straight, and it's just a trickle down effect from that point on, and they compound fast. What a great shot that was. Last week's winner and three time PBR world champ, Silvano Alves, who has mentored Kaiki over the past two summers. This is Shane Proctor, who in round number one returned to the winner's circle. Bound him down over the front, but he set up and got his weight back on those legs. Made an excellent bull ride. That was his fourth round win of the year. Here he faces lifting lines. He's going to have to be the first cowboy to ever get the job done. This bull at perfect 18 and 0. And this little bull is using a right hand delivery. Watch him jump in the air and kick. The perfect right, yeah. bovine record is intact. 19 and 0 now for lifting lives. And Shane Proctor, after winning round number one, comes crashing down to earth. It's another one of those outstanding little bulls. Goes back to a great bull we call Surefire. Leaps in that area and kicks. Usually on a right hand delivery, I thought the bull would be over there and go to the right. They moved him to the left away from Proctor's hand and they fell for it. Yet another example of how unforgiving this sport can be. And speaking of unforgiving, this is Fraser Babington. Let's take you back to a week ago. Wow, did this get dangerous and scary. He hangs up aboard Garber's Ghost, and eventually the crew gets him free. Yeah, great job by the bullfighters. But the, the interesting thing about this is the tweak that he put in his riding elbow. You're going to watch when they show him getting on his bull in the shoot right here. Watch how he puts his hand in his rope. He's going to turn his hand around backwards. <laughs> and it's not going to make sense to anybody but him. But he can't bend his elbow. So he's turned his wrist around, turn his hand around. He's going to come in backwards. I talked to him before it started in the locker room. He said, you know, it didn't feel near as bad as he thought it would. He said it felt awkward in the shoot, taking his wrap, doing things. He said, but once he left the shoot last night on left-hand delivery, he said he felt better like this than he has in a long time. So he's excited. He felt like his hand slipped down his handhold last night when the bull jumped forward. So you see the tape. He's taped that handhold down tight where it's really a short handhold where his hand can't slip to the left. So it'll be interesting to see. He said it feels a lot better than he expected. So look for big things. Well, Shorty actually told me as well that he's act he's taken his bull rope and wrapped it the opposite way, like a Brazilian rope. It's not a Brazilian rope, but he's gone from the opposite side to help that hand stay in in this direction. Yeah, absolutely, you know, Craig. And in all reality, it's, it's going to change things. If he needs a lift on that rope, he's going to have to do kind of like a bronc rider would on their buck rein uh, to get under his hand. But I don't think it changes a lot of things. If you still ride that front end, uh, he should be okay. And really, in all reality, this is going to make it very difficult to get hung up. Hey! For the second round in a row, however, the best intentions of Fraser Babington go awry. He was bucked off at 3.8 in round one. Here it's 2.5. And ultimately, right, J-Dub, no matter how much we talk about this tweaked technique, if it doesn't get him to eight seconds, it's not going to matter. Well, here's the thing, Craig. This bull bucks a lot of guys off no matter who they are, which direction their hand is turned in the rope. But the thing I admire about Fraser Babington is he's a guy with a dream of making the PBR World Finals. He's right there at the 35 mark, grinding it out to try to get to his first World Finals. And you see he's thinking about working on it. He's trying to make a dream come true, and he's doing what he has to do to do it, whether it be ride with his left hand or turn his right one around, and he's going with that. Great look of, of a small corridor these guys walk through to get back to the locker room here in Nampa. Meanwhile, Gage Gay, who got bucked off of his re-ride bull American sniper very quickly in round number one. That lasted only two seconds. Here it's Tito's after five that he faces. I've seen a video of this bull. This is this bull's first trip to the big lights. I've seen a video of him just moments ago, and he was right here in the gate to the right. It looked really good. Had a lot of bounce to him, a lot of kick, a lot of timing. But Gage has got his hands full here. If the bull stays hooked up, this could get good watching. Aboard Tito's after five, the ride lasts just over five. It's an over two weekend for Gage Gay. 
Well, the bull sure didn't have the, the trip that I seen on video a while ago, but you see he had a little rough out leaving there, but the bull should have turned there. He feels Gage over there, so he just jumps and kicks. He's probably never spun to the left before, so he don't know really what he's doing. He's just jumping and kicking around there in a circle, and uh, not a very good day for either one of them. We're still stuck on three qualified rides in terms of the round. Your bad boy more lead dog, Robson Palermo. He sits on 86 and three quarters points, hoping to earn that valuable 100 points. Coming up, three-time PBR world champion, Silvano Alves. Shake it up, unable to shake off the three-time PBR world champion. I love what we're seeing out of Silvano this weekend. Alves does his job. The three-time PBR world champion, Silvano Alves, is back. As the PBR rides on from Boise, Idaho. This week's Heinz Master Moment takes us back a whopping 15 years to the first time, or first, I should say, three-time PBR world champion. Adriano Marais, you know, a great argument that's the best ever, you know. You've got other multi-world champions. Silvano's three-time, but this guy was a pioneer. Didn't speak the language, didn't have the interpreters. Did it all on his own. No question, he paved the way for the Brazilian contingent, as they're sometimes called the killer bees, to fly up here and at times seemingly take over this tour. Silvano Alves, himself a three-time PBR world champion. Our times in Idaho, well, they've been a mixed bag. Last year in Idaho was the site of his first ever serious injury. Right there, broke his hip. You know, we look back at a guy that had a, has had a wonderful career and relatively injury-free until then. But look at him come back tonight, or last night, and uh, makes a great ride on Cowtown Swinger. Said it brought back a lot of memories watching, you know, uh, Nevada getting turned over on last night. Kind of brought back some haunting moments, but he said he fought through it and got back in and uh, made the whistle, so look for him to carry on. And Leah, as we documented last week, his first time in the winner's circle in close to 18 months, and he's now four for four. He had to first get through the anxiety that JW was just talking about, coming back to this very arena where he did break his hip. But then what did help him was the fact that he needed to just relax and not put so much pressure on himself. And then he added that, yes, last weekend's win certainly helped, and the fact that all of his buddies here helping made it that much more special. It has been a sight that, of course, we have tried to document it, and I think our longtime fans have seen. The Brazilians celebrate J-Dub as a group, whether it's Kaiki, whether it's Robson, whether it's Ben Eduardo, or, of course, Silvano last week, and the week before that was Joao Ricardo Vieira. They all talk about it all the time, that they are each other's family on the road. Well, and I've been part of the World Cup when we went to Brazil and, Aust and Australia and things like that in, the, in New Mexico. When our guy, when we go to different countries, our guys do the same thing. And it's just reversal of the roles. It's interesting to see when they was in, in Brazil, they split up. Our guys stuck together. When they're here, they pull together. Our guys split up. So it's a team effort when they're over here, and that's why they succeed, I believe. Here he's facing long-haired outlaw who takes up almost the whole shoot. to get Alves off his back. It's probably not gonna be a ton of points, but Alves will have a second score. And this looks a lot more like the old Alves that we're accustomed to, never giving up. There's nothing about this bull easy, and why I say that, there's not ever one jump the same as the last one. They're all over the place. He's almost like as if you took a balloon and let the air out of it, and it just takes off, goes all over the place. You don't know if it's gonna go left. You don't know if it's gonna go right. Ever jumps different than the last one. He hung on. Bull never really kicked hard to help him out. Great ride, not a lot of points, but on an effort, that was great. He's with Leo. Silvano, describe effort and try on that bull. I know. He's a strong bull. 
I see cup time, but he's back, the, back off the guys fast. He's really strong, but right now I'm very happy because he's more confident. Ride really well. The confidence, Craig. And back to what we talked about beforehand. If he had any hesitation at all coming into Idaho this year, well, he's erased those memories, hopefully. He becomes the fourth rider to stay perfect and sits at the bottom of that pecking order, a combined score of 162 and a quarter. He now gets to cheer for his good friend, Guilherme Marchi, who in round number one recorded his 569th career qualified ride. That's crazy. <laughs> and you know, we was talking about guys, Cake, and pushing up there towards that 50 mark for him, riding 50 times, making the whistle 50 times a year. This is a guy in 2008, had 50 rides over 86 points. Oh boy, Lone Wolf sinks his teeth into Marchi. No chance at all for the 2008 PBR World Champ. And Guilherme is gonna have to hope that 86 points is good enough to bring him back on one score. Bull turns back right in the gate. He just gets his arm straight. See that free arm get behind him, whips him out there and just slams him. But I wanna go back. Bull was starting to buck. Everything kinda of got haywire there for a second. He, in 2008, he had 50 rides, over 86 points. <laughs> that is unreal. This guy is a bull riding icon. If I'm not mistaken, partner, that was the year he had something like set between 75 and 80 qualified rides on the season. Valderon had over 60 that year and was second in the world. This is Jorge Valdivieso, one of the men who is fighting to make it back, and not only make it back, but make it to his first PBR World Finals. The Pride of Mexico, the 2004 PBR Mexican champion, the four-time Mexican national champion. He has had, you talk about qualified rides, he has had so many where he's come ever so close. By my count, he's got nine seven-plus point rides this season. I like his style. He's, he's long and lanky, kind of wiry fella. I think he's on that verge of being being a perennial qualifier to the finals. He's on the verge right now. He, he may have them made. He's, try, he's fighting through some things, but this is a bullet should be right there to the right, kind of his cup of tea. Seconds that looked like it was going to go Valdivieso's Ace way. However, devil in disguise, anything but angelic. And he goes over to this weekend. One ride, seven and change. This ride, 6.6. A lot like the ride he had last night. He starts kind of down in there. And he starts working his way out. He's doing real good. You see that outside foot kind of bouncing. The inside foot bouncing there. But the outside not really taking a hold till right there. But it's a little bit late. It bounces up. Gets him back. You've got to keep weight on those legs. If you don't, that right there is the I've outcome. I've said this. You guys know I've said this for years. Jorge hobbling a little bit. And if you've watched our telecast the past two weeks, we've been documenting the right foot and ankle injury that he has. I spoke with him earlier today. He said he doesn't even walk on it, tries not to walk at all in between events during the week. That's how badly it's bothering him. This is Tanner Byrne, who's having some issues of his own, J-Dub. Five of his last seven events have been zeros, no qualified rides. And for a guy who's a two-time winner this season, that's surprising. Yeah, you got to get that consistency up. But, you know, if something's got to be hindering him, I think. You know, I don't know if it's mentally or what. He's got to get broke through here. He's got to start making the whistle so he can look good in, in the down of the back stretch right here. This bull's going to be kind of either way, pretty strong. He's got his hands full. He faces air cool. Keep going, Jay! Go, Jay! Air cooled, look, looked a little lukewarm <laughs> in that out, and the rewrite flags fly. And when you had a, when you've been in a, in a slump, you've been bucked off so many times, and you finally get one road, and then you see the re-ride flags throwed out. <laughs> you're talking about, you're like, oh man, I finally made the whistle, now I gotta try it again. So he's gonna have to get on another one if he wants a chance at that championship round. But he's doing everything right. He's overriding him just a little bit, but the bull's not helping him. 
Uh, he's expecting more out of that bull, and he's trying to get more out of him, but the bull just wasn't giving it to him, so that's what kind of got him down inside there. <laughs> he's, got, he's got his protector, coach, and brother, Jesse Byrne, here helping him decide whether or not to take the re-ride, and as you astutely pointed out, J-Dub, I mean, it seems like a no-brainer that he would accept this re-ride because 72 and three quarters isn't really gonna help him out much. He turned it down. We will get confirmation. Shorty, did you hear that as well? Did he turn it down? You taking it? He's taking oh, it. Okay. All right, yeah. good. Thank you for confirming that. And it looks, we're getting word that that's going to be Copper Star will be his re-ride bull. As we move on to 2004 PBR World Champ Mike Lee. Mike was bucked off in round number one. He sat atop Gray Ghost for only 2.4 seconds. And here he faces Torch. Torch should be right here either way. Mike Lee got bucked down last night. Not riding with any shafts, kind of going old school. Wanting to get that bull over for him. You mentioned Guilherme Marchi at 569. Mike Lee, the only other man over 500 qualified rides. He sits at 506. And he's going to sit at 506 for at least another weekend. Both rides this weekend in Idaho last two and change. Watch this here. You can just see Mike just looking lazy. Watch how the bull just leaves there. He kind of sits on his butt, just cheats that bull around that corner, and then when he goes back the other way, he never fights his way back to the front end. He just sat there and let that bull have his way with him. In the past few minutes, we've added one qualified ride, which surprisingly is only four in round number two. None better than your bad boy mower lead dog in the round, Robson Palermo. The last guy who will ride in this round is defending PBR world champion, J.B. Mooney, which leads us to tonight's episode of b w Hitched. Hitched, presented by b w Trailer Hitches, the official hitch of the PBR. When you step off of a bull, and look over your shoulder. Who's the bullfighter that you want to see? Any of them. Are they the greatest athletes you've ever seen? They are, the toughest. Who is your favorite? Jesse. Jesse Byrne? Yes. You and I, karaoke night. What is your go-to song that you are going to perform? Ice Ice Baby. Do you know the words to Ice Ice Baby? No. J.B. Mooney, all right, stop, collaborate, and listen. I sit back with my brand new invention. Something grabs a hold of me tightly. Flow like a harpoon daily and nightly. Will it ever stop? I don't know. J.B. Mooney, what is the craziest thing a PBR fan has ever said to you? Ask me if I was riding the next day after I broke my leg because I was on their fantasy team. Did you get on with that broken leg? I did. Hitched. Presented by B&W Trailer Hitches. The official hitch of the PBR. Here's this week's athlete profile brought to you by Cooper Tires. Seen him lead the world championship so much. When they go to the left, he can just take every bit of the power away from them. Montarias em Tours é como uma uma família, pois nós não competimos entre nós, competimos entre nós e os touros, então é sempre um torcendo para o outro e desejando o melhor para cada um, pois nós sabemos que é um grande desafio e um grande perigo também competir no touro. Joel Ricardo Vieira steps up and delivers. That's your Cooper Tires athlete profile, and we'll get to see the Colorado Springs winner start off section number three. We'll also check in with Derek Kolbaba and Matt Triplett. Jess Locke with the young phenom will be facing wipeout by the end. We get to revisit Cody Campbell, but let's take you back to Colorado Springs a couple weeks ago. He, Joao, rides Big Cat to clinch the win. Well, it's nothing for this guy to ride any bull into his hand. If you got one that goes left, this is the guy you don't want to get on him because when they go left, that's into his wheelhouse, and he is great that direction. In round number one here, Gentleman Jim got the better of him. A little over three seconds. This is a bull that he has faced down at the touring pro level 
came close against Joe the Grinder at Bismarck this year, 7.7 seconds. That's funny, this bull is, is unridden this year, but he's got such a good time. Oh boy, he makes quick work of the world number four. Joao Ricardo Vieira has no idea what hit him right there. Something about this bull, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's this kind of walk and leap out of there and then turns back. He just gets guys on the ground. And, I mean, he's not going to be a big scoring type bull. Something's hidden behind this bull that, that's hard for these guys to get by because that looks like a 41 and three quarter bull score. That's the kind you want to get on every day and they just aren't riding him. Back to back after winning in Colorado Springs, he now has had back to back weekends going 0 for 2. This is Derek Kolbaba who is trying to avoid the same fate before he goes. Let's check in with Liam. Over to the event today, uh, we noticed that Kolbaba had quite a truck that stood out. And uh, since June, a company called Legacy has given him this truck to start driving. Had zero miles back in the day. And as you can see, this is a truck that stands out. So I asked him about it. He said it is is completely decked out. He 100% loves it. He will get people driving by him who stop to take pictures just like I did. Photo credit by me, by the way, on that photo. And then the last question I did have to ask is, have you gotten a ticket yet because you stand out? And he goes, no, not at all. So it's working, that truck. Well, come on. Speaking of working, when you're 20 years old, let's raise your hand. Who wouldn't want a truck that looks like that? Driving around the country, and you know, he's not, you and you know he's not breaking the speed limit. <laughs> Let's see what he can do against Say I Won't Playboy. He rode Striker for six seconds. He needs to find two more here in round two. This is another one of the bulls that guys have a lot of problem with, and this one I know the reason because he, he jumps and kicks hard, but he also steps forward in that spin, and he wants to get guys raised up. J-Dub, I want you to explain that ride, and not just to me, but to everybody, because it looked like Cole Baba was doing everything right, moving his hips, trying to stay in the ride and stay up with the ride, and then it looks like he just shifted himself off. Well, he just overrides him, and watch this. Right here, he's riding good, he's up in the middle, he's got his legs up there in contact with him. He's taking a little bit of a jerk right there, but he's riding, riding through it. Now, right here, the bull steps forward, and he just overrides in there now watch he, he never rides back to the center he just keeps going around to the the right there really deep instead of riding that bull as if he was going straight that's now five events in a row without a qualified ride and as you can tell from Derek's reaction not happy with himself Matt Triplett meanwhile came back last weekend came back in a big way one round number one 86 and three quarters on Gatlin gun he is now using his exemptions but when I talked to him earlier today J-Dub he said he is all in to try to make this year's world finals well he's 53rd in the world points he's going to have to be all in with a vengeance from here on out if he's going to make it. This is a great bull. Jess Locker was 86 and a half on him and, and uh, Eugene last week. So we know he's a, he's a round winner type. Matt's just got to make good with it. And another ride where it looked at the halfway point, like Triplett had started to lock down on just one, the bull just outworks him on the back half. Kind of a bad little shot right there, but it gets him picked up good, gets him brought down, but then he gets a good seat right here. He's riding like Matt Triplett's supposed to ride, but then right here he just leans back, gets all the weight off his legs. We've talked about it time and time again. If you get rocked back where the pockets of your britches are on that bull's back, that brings the weight off your legs, your feet come up, therefore you see what happens. 0 for 2 this weekend with Triplett. He'll have a couple more regular season events to try to get those points necessary. But as J-Dub mentioned, it is going to be a tall task indeed. Meanwhile, Aaron Roy is trying to protect his spot in the top 30. And he did enough in round number one to ride Kylie for 81 and a quarter. Here he faces Funky Town. some moves of his own, taking Funky Town to task, and the dismount. Well, if that bull looks familiar, he looks a lot like his, his daddy, 
Uh, that bull's daddy's train wreck. They look almost identical. Great little bull just turns back right there to the right. Exactly what Aaron Roy wants coming in here. Makes a good ride. Does everything he's supposed to. Going to get him a good score, 84 and three quarters. I don't know that that's going to make that championship round, but it's going to be close. A late season resurgence for Aaron Roy. And sorry to correct you, J-Dub, but he's definitely going to make the oh, championship yeah, yeah, round. Right. He's got sorry. two. Yeah, he's got, he's got two. two. Yeah. He gets slammed, but the clock shows eight. The judges may take another look at this just to confirm, but Barboza taking out a little mental anguish on mental revenge. It would be his first qualified ride of the weekend. Really good ride. As he goes right here to the ride, I kept waiting for him and waiting for him to go back the other way. He does just a little bit late. That hand being down on the inside, you see when he goes back the other way, watch right here, that pulls him into his hand. Now he's just a little bit late going back that other way, but looks like the clock's going to be really close. Maybe he gets it. The rider on the bubble in 15th is Kaiki Pacheco. So if this stands as a qualified ride, he's going to knock his good friend in world number one out of the top 15. The judges continue to review. Remember, you have to have your hand in the rope without touching any part of the bull or the ground. It looks from that angle like he's got it. He's not touching the dirt. I don't know if he had his hand in any part of the rope by the other angle we've seen. It's going to be close. He's got word he will get a score, so Barbosa should come back off the strength of that one ride. Let's send it down to Leah. How important was that? Uh, this, this ride is very important for me, but I need to make a point. Uh, I'm very happy because I stay on this bull. Craig. 83 and a half points is going to put him in the tie for 11th with Ty Pozitbon. Robson Palermo, your bad boy more lead dog in the round. Silvano Alves, last week's winner. He sits in sixth in the round. We got our 15 best bulls coming up. One of them is Bruiser, and he is ready to bring it. He's always had the talent, and lately, he hasn't let any cowboy get a whiff of eight seconds. Wake up with a jolt as the outspoken Craig Carton and former star quarterback Boomer Esiason team up to bring you all the latest from around the world of sports. Boomer and Carton, presented by Gillette Pro Shield, weekday mornings at 6 Eastern, right here on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Six qualified rides in round number two, none better than Robson Palermo, 86 and three quarters points. We had 15 qualified rides in round number one. One of them was Jess Lockwood, but Leah Garcia just didn't, I don't know, how do you put it? He didn't stay true to the form we've seen from him. True to the form would have been what? Taking a re-ride? Oh, to be the young gun and under the spotlight by all, Craig. Jess Lockwood reminded me before the event when I talked to him that he gets to control his own destiny and that he gets to make his own decisions. So he made a decision, he's living with it, and he's standing by it. He didn't take a rewrite, and he's completely fine. Well, well. <laughs> fine now, but maybe not fine when he got a certain phone call last night, J-Dub. I seen him at breakfast this morning. I said, well, have, have you talked to Cody Lambert today? And he said, I had three missed calls from him when I got back to the locker room. And that's all he said. And he, well, he did say, he said, I got a buck chewing of a lifetime. So and that was all I was really saying. Then I get back to my room, Cody calls me. And he said, he said, I chewed him out bad enough that when I got done, I felt sorry for him. He said, but he, he understands. Like after we, after the new kind of wore off of him, the shock of it, when we visited with him, he understood and, and he, and he said to me, he said, all right, I made a rookie mistake. I was wrong. I should have took it. And that's what he's got to learn from. That's what he's got to take out of this study. Learn something from it. And if he's going to make that ground up, he's got to do it in the go-arounds too, not just the average. So. Well, let's, we'll continue the story. I think Jess Lockwood fans hope after he makes eight seconds here against Wipeout. This is a great opportunity for the 19-year-old, not just to put yesterday truly in the past, but to win a round. 
Well, and, and you think, well, if he makes the whistle, makes a short round and wins, it's all washed out. But had he placed in the go round last night, he might have got 10 points closer, 30 points closer. There's Jess Lockwood's answer. And as Leah said, he controls his own destiny. If it's more than 86 and three quarters, he goes to the lead in the round. He has booked his ticket to the championship round. And it's safe to say Jess Lockwood fired up. 86 and a half. Just what he wanted, just what he, he thought he could get out of him. He thought he could be a few more points on the Bull doesn't quite have the day he was expecting, but all the same, he made the whistle. He fought through those recoveries right through there. Bull takes big leaps, little leaps, nothing the same. Great bull riding. This is a guy that I'm a fan of, just not a fan of the decision he made last night. I've been a fan through him 100% until that one little mistake last night, but this is a guy that's on championship form. He's with Leah. Jess, you made peace with the decision not to take a rewrite yesterday. After everything that you've been through now, do you still feel the same? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I stick with my decision. Uh, Cody Lambert gave me a good butt chewing. I knew I had to come and ride this afternoon, and I did, and it worked out good. Tell me a little bit about being able to come back from that night to this night to deliver. I mean, you got to show up and ride every bull you get on, whether you're not taking re-rides or not. I mean, you just got to ride everything you get on, so we're going there. And you're getting another one, Craig. Well, it's great to hear a, a, a young man at 19, as he said, he's taking responsibility not just for his actions, but his decisions and the aftermath of both. Meanwhile, while that interview was going on, that was Casey Hayes who very quickly bucked off. Casey Hayes now eight of his last nine events without a qualified ride. Stetson Lawrence, who bucked off of Elvis in round number one, just over seven seconds, gets a chance against American Sniper. This is the bull that took care of Gage Gay in round one. Well, he was on a left-hand delivery last night. They moved him to a right, but he still should be maybe one jump in around the left. On a left-hand delivery, he's right in the gate. They get him to where he kind of hits his head a little bit. So they move him to the right every so often to get him to clear out and make one good jump. Stetson Lawrence is going to vote for that delivery again. American Sniper gives him a chance to show off his Native American dancing skills. 86 and three quarters. Sorry to interrupt, no, partner, but we've got a new round leader. Round leader, just what we call for. Made one big long jump and around the left, up and down into his hand. He made all the right adjustments, moving that outside foot. Gets off and away from his hand, even with an American style rope. Might have got away with one a little bit lucky there. Able to tie with Robson Palermo. So we have, oh, bad boy more lead dogs in round number two. But most importantly for Lawrence, he'll come back off of that one big ride. And we move on to a man we haven't seen since the finals of 2013, Cody Campbell. One last week in Albany. And J-Dub, this is just one of those success stories that I love about this sport. There are so many opportunities at the lower levels, at the Blue Depth level, and at the Touring Pro level to garner points to make your way back. Cody Campbell, as you saw with the win, absolutely excited to get to come back to the big league. This is a guy with a few injuries. He got cut from the tour. He went on the rodeo trail. He made the national finals rodeo. Got the feeling good, got his consistency and confidence back up, worked his way back to the turn pro and blew that level. That strong heart decided to not give in and eventually works Cody Campbell off. A seven and change ride is going to leave Cody Campbell leaving Idaho empty handed. Big Bull has a leap and jump around the left. He's a little bit late there, but he catches up well. Now watch this Bull leap forward right about here. Moves forward just a half a jump, pulls the rope out of his hand. They can't do nothing when he rope's not in the hand or in your hand, so comes down at 7-1-7. Seven, seven. 
Great to see him back, though, and hopefully it's not the last time we see Cody Campbell in the coming weeks. This is Tanner Byrne and his re-ride opportunity. He was bucked off long here in round one at seven and a half seconds. Here he faces Copper Star. This is the son of the, the great bull Copperhead Slinger that you seen Chad Berger have back several years ago. That's kind of big and scary, went a lot of championship rounds. It's the son out of him and should be right there either way. Cooper looked like he was riding, or Tanner looked like he was riding better in this last round when he got a re-ride. See what happens right here. He makes the eight seconds. Copper Star was looking for a target after Tanner Byrne took out his aggression. And it should be enough to bring him back. What with the low scores filling out the top 15. Moving that outside foot, Craig, he gets the override just a little bit. You watch him just the same as the last bull. I thought the last bull was probably just not good enough for him, but he overrode this one a little bit. That's something to pay attention to in that short round, that championship round. He's got to not override those bulls and get down on the inside quite so far. Let's send it to Leah. What would you say is the challenge and or the excitement of having to get on bulls back to back like that? Uh, I think you get your motor running a little bit and then you're uh, in game mode by the time that second one comes. I don't mind it one bit. Craig. Another qualified ride in the round. That is now nine total in round number two. Stetson Lawrence a few moments ago, 86 and three quarters about out of the new delivery with American Sniper. He's tied with the round lead with Robson Palermo. Smooth operator has turned into a tough sell and a rough ride for anyone on his back. We'll see him in the championship round. His opinions are strong, and he is never afraid to let you hear them. The Doug Gottlieb Show, presented by Sleep Number, weekdays at 3 Eastern, as Doug turns the sports world on its head, right here on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Nine qualified rides so far. Here, section four in round number two. We'll begin with Cody Nance, a seven-time event winner on the Built Ford Tough Series. We'll also get to see Cooper Davis, our number two ranked rider in the world. And J.B. Mooney will be the last rider out with Kaiki Pacheco for the moment, J-Dub, not in the top 15. As we get to those last few riders, Cooper Davis and J.B., golden opportunities for them. We've seen Jess Lockwood convert. He'll be in the Built Ford Tough Championship round, but the points are there to close that gap to Kaiki. Something to think about tonight. And then there's two more events with the 15-15 bucking battle, and then the only the World Finals. This race is going to get really, really tight before it's all said and done. And there's no chance, like right now, to capitalize on it. And then if you're going to show up next week, there's no time like right then to capitalize. You have to do it every night. You got to, you got to put your foot on the throttle and not let it up at this point. Mike Lee in the red shirt, there to help his good friend Cody Nance, who sits on the back of intensified Clyde, unwritten on the Built Ford Tough Series. Lay down in there a little bit. Cody's one of them that might just take him with him down in the front end right there. Well, intensified Clyde adding some intensity to his shoot procedure. Another one of Chad Berger's goals. Intensified Clyde finally worked himself into a spin and finally worked Cody Nance off. A possibility there if he'd made it to eight seconds for a re-ride opportunity. But all for naught, Nance doesn't make the required eight. Well, we've been, we've just been tearing Jess Lockwood down about not taking a, a re-ride. But uh, this would have been his re-ride last night, and he said he didn't think he was good enough uh, to warrant getting on. And, and by this trip, he might have won that argument. But had he rode him last night, he might have got another re-ride and got to a better one. But there well, we have it. If you heard while JW was making his comment, there has been a challenge. 
Cody Nance, or one of his associates, has hit the challenge button, trying to eke out a few extra tenths of a second. But on review, it looks like that touch is going to take tenths away. 7.67 may be the official time. And what they're looking at now is exactly when the clock started in terms of when the bull broke the plane leaving the chute. They didn't have the replay clock, uh, you know, in the back end of my career there. But if they had, I, I, I feel like if I wouldn't have been seven, eight-ish, mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't know that I could, uh, unless something really went differently wrong. Uh, I felt, but on a normal out of shoot, getting clean, as a general rule, I think I would probably, if I wasn't no closer than seven point eight or better, them judges are. <laughs> you know, veterans at doing this, and they've done it thousands and thousands of times. So I think they're pretty, they're usually pretty close. I, if it wasn't seven, eight, I might not have pushed it. Well, they finally reach a decision on that ride. No qualified ride for Cody Nance. So it's another rule for two weekend, and he has had a number of those this season. So we come to another rider who has been struggling of late. Paulo Lima, who at one time was our number one bull rider in the world, in fact, numerous weeks at that level. He has now ridden only four out of his last 30, and he hopes he can turn that around aboard pile driver. Yeah, and early on in the year, he was one of the front runners for first fourth of the season there. And, and uh, this bull's good, should be right there at the rack. And give him a show at times, it looks like he's going left. Did a great correction and sort of used his shoulder to keep himself alive in that ride. And an interesting way to celebrate by the Brazilian, but at least he made the eight seconds. Yeah, about <laughs> that celebration. But uh, hey, he made the right corrections. Bull's not just overly outstanding, but he's turning back into his hand. He's making those corrections and something to build on going into next week. Hey, I made the whistle. Mm, that felt good. Young bull riders at home, we would not recommend working that into your repertoire after you make the eight seconds. Paulo Lima with 84 has given himself a chance to come back. That slots him into 13th overall. He now will get a chance to watch, along with the rest of us, his good friend Valderon de Oliveira who at one time seemed unstoppable, but unfortunately, Father Time has caught up with the Brazilian over the last few years. He himself, only five of his last 38, including a round one buck off, he faces Red Bull. It's a, it's a big bull with a big set of horns, gonna turn back right to left, got a little forward momentum to him. And, uh, you know, Valeron has of late has been not real well away from his hand to the left. And that's exactly the direction this bull's gonna go. Gonna have a little step ahead. If he doesn't ride in the front end, this is not gonna go well for him either. The first rider we've seen in this round put on the clock. He's now down to 20 seconds to nine. Redbone finally got a chance to swing those horns around at somebody after Valderon came down on the ground. Bottom line, it's an 0 for 2 weekend yet again for Oliveira. Bull's getting a lot of age on him, slowing down. Probably just, probably going to get a rewrite if he does make the whistle, but you see he's not ever going back that front from the hips. He's just kind of leaning off in there, reaching for it, but he's not leaning his body for it. He's got his arm up there, but it's just not enough. And when you get that right arm straight, you just kind of lock up. First thing you do on those bulls that's slow like that is move off the inside. And that bull just felt him, and he's got enough experience. He just let him go to the inside. Stormy Wing. Longtime fans know we describe him as one of our home run hitters. Always the possibility he can score over 90, but usually when he bucks off, he bucks off quickly. Case in point, in round number one, he lasted 2.8 seconds aboard Hammer Down, and he had that great result in Tulsa during the summer right after the break, J-Dub, where he finished second. But since then, it has been mostly a dry spell. Well, 
season before Tulsa, it was a, it seemed like a dry spell. This, this is a guy, you know, that you expect bigger things out of, but he's just not putting it together. And I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it's just not happening. And I don't know that it gets any better right here. This bull's right here to the right. And the thing about it is this bull's going to get stronger as the ride goes on and, and it progresses. Stormy's got to get tapped off soon and quick right out of the gate if he has any chance to make it miss Is there such a thing as completely losing your feel for a ride? I mean, does that happen to a rider? Oh, yeah. They, you, you just get lost because... Frank, Jesse, and Shorty become targets because Stormy Wing looks stunned when he hit the dirt right there. The second round in a row where it's been two and change and things are snowballing the wrong way. That's what I was about to say, Craig. When, it, when things start going bad, you get bucked off. One bull hits yourself or he slips and you think, well, I should have rode this when I, one bucked me off that I was supposed to got by. You start fighting your head and it just snowballs and you just, well, maybe my hand was too far in the middle. Maybe it's too far down the side. Maybe I wasn't using my feet correctly. Maybe I wasn't reaching. You start fighting your head on what things went wrong, and you start trying to correct one thing that causes another one to go wrong. And he's fighting that one. And before you know, you've done forgot how to ride bulls. Yeah, I mean, it's just that simple. Red bandana didn't forget to go after bull riders. That's for sure. Great job by the bullfighters. Meanwhile, Robson Palermo and Stetson Lawrence still co bad boy more lead dogs here in round number two. It's been a rough ride lately for fan favorite J.B. Mooney. J.B. Mooney hobbles out of the dirt. Pearl Harbor. Oh, oh boy. Oh. oh my gosh. J.B. Mooney's face go into a part of the shoots that has no padding. Oh no, he's over the front end. He's coming up next as the PBR rides on from Boise, Idaho. Tuesday through Friday nights at 6 Eastern, host Adam Shine turns the enthusiasm up to 11 as he gives you his take on everything happening in sports on and off the field. Dive into Adam's mind on Time to Shine only on CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Our final three riders, well, they are already in the Built Ford Tough Championship round. Chase Outlaw at the moment, your top qualifier, which means he would have first pick, trying to win his third ever career event. But J.B. Mooney, you can see him right there. He's in the number 12 spot. He will be the last man out of the shoots in round number two. Therefore, he will have the last say in how that top 15 is set. Cooper Davis getting ready to roll aboard Thunderbolt. Before he goes, let's check in with Leah. Cooper Davis is one of the Cowboys who's mastered the art of blocking the noise. And he's one of those who gave some advice to Jess Lockwood earlier, which is don't pay attention to anyone else. Play your own game. I had a chance to chat with Cooper a while back about his philosophy of riding bulls and his ability to stay calm. There's been people trying to do reality shows with him. He's had articles in big magazines. He's had the pressure coming at him, and he just blocks it. He says his trick is to just stay as calm as possible and, again, to keep playing his own game. J-Dub, it's been well documented as well how you sort of helped prod him along last year. This is his ride in round number one against Grandpa Joe. And even with the wrist injury, even with the stuff that he's dealt with over the past few months, he finds a way. Well, and this is, you talk about Kay Pacheco having that ice in his veins. This is another guy that don't show a lot of emotion until it's over. He's focused, he's poised, and, and when it's turmoil like this, nothing shakes him. I ain't seen him shaking yet. This is the guy that, if there's a dark horse, this is the guy that's coming in. He's not the dark horse, he might be my favorite. Denied. Oh, <laughs> hey. got to get away. Cooper Davis wait, wait, wait. rolls to safety and lightning strikes again in Idaho. An 86 in round one and an 89 
in round number two. Talking with Chad Berger before the event started about some of the new bulls here. He said this was his pick for the go around win. He knows what he's talking about. He tied for third in round number one. He moves to the lead in round number two. And J-Dub, this goes back to your very important point about winning rounds. Davis, if he can win this round and the event, has closed that gap mightily. That's what I'm talking about. If you can, the, everybody wants to, you know, concentrate on that average points and the event wins. That's great, but when you go to stacking those round wins on top of it, it just gains you double the ground every time. And that's what you've got to do when you're behind and you're playing catch up. You can't pull your foot off that throttle. We've only got two events after this and before that world finals. You have to mash on it and throw caution to the wind and let it all hang out. We and anyone can't miss that smile. He's with Leah. How big were those moves you were making from your perspective? You know, I felt like I was throwing Hail Marys over there and uh, just kind of had to never say die to it worked out. I talked before you nodded your head about how you tend to stay calm. Can you comment on that? Yeah, you know, there's no point in getting worked up no matter the situation. Uh, I feel like the more you stay calm, the better your opportunity is. Okay. Cooper Davis just needs to keep doing what he is doing. He's leading the round, he is leading the event, and now he has two riders to watch. Marco Gucci, who also got a score in round number one. In fact, he placed second with 86 and three quarters. Now attempts to get it done again aboard Stars and Stripes. This is his maiden voyage at this type of event at Bill Ford Tough Level. Gage Gay was 88 points on this bullet at turn pro bull riding, so he's got the ability to be up there. This could be a round winner as well. Chad Berger don't bring them to town unless they're good, and this one's getting right in that boat. What's at stake for Marco, since he's just a lot of this season, is a trip to the World Finals. He's 36th coming into this weekend and needs points. Should be left right here away from his hand. That's the only downfall of this bull, away from Marco's hand. Marco's better into his hand than he is away, so he's got to concentrate and not miss that first corner. If he does, it's going to be a long day at the office. Stars and Stripes looks like he's given him a couple opportunities. You gotta give a Gucci credit who works himself through a couple difficult spots and is able to fly the Brazilian flag over Stars and Stripes. Eighty-five and three quarters. And it goes around right here. Watch his foot come up. We're starting right there. Look how bad it, how far it comes back up. What a correction to get that foot back down, take a hold, and then dominate the last half of this ride. Excellent bull ride on Marco's part. We're starting to stack up one heck of a Built Ford Tough Championship round, and now eight men, a perfect two for two. And we are down to our last rider, none other than defending PBR World Champion J.B. Mooney. He has missed the past two weeks, resting multiple injuries. If you missed the beginning of the show, he told Leah Garcia that he didn't need to go see the doctor. He knew what was wrong with him. And guess what? He picked up right where he left off in round one. That's the thing about this guy. He's like Tom Brady. He can lay out for events and come <laughs> back and throw the touchdown. Last night, he just didn't have enough bull to throw that touchdown and win that go around. He's got a bull tonight that might be the one to do it. He's unridden at the Built for Tough level. He's bucked off Eduardo. He's bucked off Fabiano. But I'm putting my money on J.B. Mooney. Never bet against J.B. Mooney. The music is his calling card. This crowd hopes they're about to see eight seconds of work. And you want to see the respect J.B. Mooney commands? Two of the best young riders we have seen in a long time are looking up at the screen just like the rest of us.
Trust me, that's how J.B. Mooney used to look up to uh, Justin McBride and Chris Shivers. So it's no secret that when you find somebody that rides good, pay attention to them. J.B. faces war cry. This is a big step up for this bull. Surprise, surprise, all for naught. J.B. Mooney falls by the wayside, and Warcry does his job. J.B. thinks he's going left right in the gate. Bull takes a big jump. He gets J.B. kind of raised up. He gets back around there, but then he raises right back up, gets that arm behind him, looks at the ground, picks his leg up, Steps off of him. You see that out of JB from time to time. J Dub, I'm that just moves, getting that moves haunted him. I'm just getting word. Sorry to keep over talking you, but this is big news. We're gonna have four men out because of injury in the Built Ford Tough Championship round. Ty Pazabon, Nevada Newman, Ryan Dirtyder, and Rubens Barbosa. That's Cooper Davis, your round winner. All credit to him. He will have first pick in the draft. But to continue what I was just saying, believe it or not, Kaiki Pacheco, our world number one, who was 19th, is now going to be the last man in the championship round. Well, he'll get last, last pick in that draft, but you know what? He's in there with a fighting chance. The man who controls his destiny better than anyone. Cooper Davis looking for his third win of the season and looking to close that gap dramatically on the one man in front of him, Kaiki Bashek. It's just amazing to see that what we did 25 years ago would be worldwide. Over the last 10 years or so, we've made a, a major concerted effort to grow internationally, and we opened up offices in Brazil and Canada and Australia. Uh, we've worked with licensees in Mexico, and we're getting ready to have events in China, of all places. When you uh, look at a PBR event, you see how many people come. Our world champion is a legitimate world champion. It is a bunch of events in Central America, and we see now New Zealand, and I heard that in Papua New Guinea. I didn't even know that Papua New Guinea had bulls. The history of bull riding and the cowboys certainly were born in the American West. And um, so there's a lot of our heritage in bull riding and bull riding's in our heritage. Um, but, you know, if you look at it, there's that same Western lifestyle culture in pretty much every country that we're operating in. In Europe, they're riding bulls. Due to the success of PBR, due to the media coverage, Everybody now is watching. All the cowboys come here for the United States or come for PBR for a ride for the this buckle. It's definitely a world sport and the world champion is thanks for exactly what it says. For more information, go to PBR.com slash Ford and you can have a chance to win a 2016 F-150 and a VIP trip to World Finals. While you're at PBR.com slash Ford, you can also watch videos of all your PBR favorites. And as, as I said, excuse me, that 2016 F-150 and the VIP trip for two to the 2016 World Finals in Vegas, well, those are the big prizes you want to win. Speaking of big, we've got the 15 best moving on, trying to win our event here in Idaho. Cooper Davis will have first pick, just ahead of Marco Gucci and Chase Outlaw, but at, at the bottom, the bigger news, perhaps, Kaiki Pacheco, who is 19th, gets in off of the strength of his 70 and three-quarter score.